Abdullah Barakat Ali Halal Family. Welcome to the channel. I hope you guys are having yourself a wonderful uh, day. In today's video, guys, we'll be reacting to the Indonesian military power. This video was uh, suggested by Imam Taufik. Thank you very much for taking the time to send me your recommendation and suggestion. The video is by uh, Ganza Channel, and the link of uh, the video is in the uh, description below in case you guys wanted to uh, check it out. Inshallah, we'll get started with the video momentarily. And at the end of the video, I'll be sharing with you my observation and reaction. So please, Make sure you stay until the end. With that said, now let's get started with our video. Happy viewers, it is time for Indonesia to rise up, to defend its country, because Indonesia is a big country, now we will bring about the 2019 Indonesian military power, which many of you may not know about yet, let us refer to the following info. Indonesia is a unitary state, and the form of government of Indonesia is a republic, with the House of Representatives, the Regional Representative Council and the President directly elected. The national capital of Indonesia is Jakarta. Indonesia shares land borders with Malaysia, on the island of Kalimantan, with Papua New Guinea on the island of Papua, and with Timor-Leste on the island of Timor. Other neighboring countries are Singapore, the Philippines, Australia, and the Union Territory of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in India. The Indonesian National Armed Forces TNI, consisting of three armed forces, namely the Army, Navy, and Air Force. The TNI is led by a TNI commander, while each force is led by a Chief of Staff. The current TNI commander is TNI Marshal Hadi Jajanto, and the Defense Minister, namely, Prabowo Sujanto. During the guided democracy until the New Order era, the TNI was once combined with the Indonesian National Police. This merger was called the Brave Armed Forces of the Republic of Indonesia. In accordance with MPR Decree No. I, MPR, 2000, concerning the separation of the TNI and Polri, and MPR Decree No. 7, MPR, 2000, regarding the role of the TNI and the role of the Polri. On September 30, 2004, the TNI law drop was ratified by the House of Representatives the People, who were subsequently signed by President Megawati Sukarnaputri on October 19, 2004. Starting in 2010, the Indonesian government is trying to strengthen the TNI, in order to achieve minimum basic strength standards. The MEF was divided into three stages of a strategic plan until 2024. Initially the government budgeted RP. 156 trillion, for the supply of the TNI's main weaponry system, in the MEF 2010-2014 period. Every year the TNI gets a budget that is approved by the House of Representatives through the state budget. Unlike the National Police, which receives a direct budget for one organizational unit, National Police Headquarters, the budget allocated to the TNI, is not directly used for the TNI itself, but must be divided into five organizational units, namely the Ministry of Defense, the TNI Headquarters, the Army, the Navy and the Air Force. In 2014, the government of Indonesia allocated 83.4 trillion to the Ministry of Defense in the draft state budget. Entering the age of 74, Indonesian military strength still counts on the world stage. This is reflected in the results of the 2019 Global Firepower Survey, which ranked Indonesia 16th in the world from 137 countries. Indonesia's military strength index is at the level of 0.2804. Indonesia's position is below Pakistan, but it is superior compared to Israel and North Korea, as shown in the graph below. The United States, US, is still the country with the highest military power with a power index of 0.0615. 
Russia came in second with a power index of 0.0639 and China with a power index of 0.0673 in third. In Asia, Indonesia's military strength ranks 9th while in Asia Pacific Indonesia ranks 8th. The power index assessment uses more than 55 indicators, the closer it gets to zero, the more perfect a country's military power is. By using a unique formula, a country with sophisticated technology can defeat a bigger country. In this ranking not only measures the number of weapons, but also the geographical location, personnel strength and financial stability. The ownership of nuclear weapons or missiles is not counted in this power index. The number of personnel is one of a country's military strength. But without the main defense system, defense equipment, then it feels incomplete. Defense equipment usually includes weapons and war transportation and other equipment owned by the Indonesian National Army TNI, and the Special Forces Command COPASIS. Indonesia itself has several industries that support the strength of the Indonesian military, namely PT Pandad, Persero, which produces weapons, PT Bergantara Indonesia produces military transportation, and PT PAL. In addition there are several foreign-made weapons such as South Korea, Switzerland, and Italy. Launching Global Firepower the Indonesian military ranks 16th out of 137 with an index of 0.2804, 0, 0 0.0 is the perfect index. Manpower values related to a nation's complete population and as it relates to theoretical available fighting strength. Wars, particularly those with high attrition, traditionally favor higher manpower. Total population. 262,787,403. Available manpower, 130,868,127, 49.8%. Fit for service, 108,620,545, 41.3%. Reaching military age annually, 4,540,339. 1.7%. Total military personnel, 800,000, a state, 0.3%. Active personnel, 400,000, 0.2%. Reserve personnel, 400,000, 0.2%. Air power total aircraft strength values include both fixed and rotary wing systems from all branches of service, UVs are not included in this total. Attack values cover both multi-role and purpose-built light attack types, and so some fighters also fall into the total attack. Transport's value includes only fixed wing tactical, strategic aircraft. UVs are currently being excluded from the total. For an in-depth look into the numbers available to any Air Force of the world, consider www.ma.org, external link, the World Directory of Modern Military Aircraft. Also consider aircraft throughout the military history of Indonesia, external link. Total aircraft strength, 451, rank 30 of 137. Fighters, 41, 9.1%. Rank 43 of 137. Attack, 65, 14.4%, rank 37 of 137. Transports, 62, 13.7%, rank 11 of 137. Trainers, 104, 23.1%, rank 29 of 137. Total helicopter strength, 192. 42.6%, rank 24 of 137. Attack helicopters, 8, 1.8%, rank 36 of 137. Land strength combat tank values include main battle tanks, BTs, light tanks, and tank destroyers. No distinction is made between track and wheel types. Armored fighting vehicles, AFV, value includes APCs. IFVs, MRAPs, and armored cars. Rocket projectors only include self-propelled forms. Also consider armor and artillery throughout the military history of Indonesia, external link. Combat tanks, 315, rank 52 of 137. 
Armored Fighting Vehicles, 1300, ranked 47 of 137. Self-propelled Artillery, 141, ranked 30 of 137. Told Artillery, 356, ranked 30 of 137. Rocket Projectors, 36, ranked 47 of 137. Strength Naval Aircraft Carrier values include traditional carriers as well as helicopter carriers. Submarine value includes diesel electric and nuclear powered types, no distinction being made between conventional and nuclear attack forms. Total Naval Assets value includes all possible, available vessels including auxiliaries, which are not shown individually below. Also consider warships and submarines throughout the military history of Indonesia, external link. Total Naval Assets, 221. Aircraft Carriers, 0. Frigates, 8. Destroyers, 0. Corvettes, 24. Submarines, 12. Patrol Vessels, 139. Mine Warfare, 11. That is the strength of the Indonesian military which is so respected by the world, who feel as an Indonesian citizen, must be proud of its military strength. Thank you very much, for watching this information until the end. Wow guys, that was uh, interesting. So they said basically Indonesia is ranked uh, 16 out of uh, 137 countries uh, in the world based on their uh, basically military uh, power, which is uh, pretty interesting. You know, it's nice, for example, to have all these kind of uh, military uh, hardware for uh, defensive uh, purposes. And, um, you know, having these kind of uh, hardware is really, really expensive. So from a government's perspective, they have to basically play a balancing game, right? They have to to ensure that they put enough money aside for military but at the same time they have enough money for education for roads and, and any other needs that they might the country that might have right so uh, really really cool guys it was uh, nice to see and learn a little bit more about the hardware uh, capabilities what uh, kind of hardware Indonesia has and they mentioned that some of them are actually produced in the country which is uh, cool so Thank you very much guys for suggesting this video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and if you like me to react to another video you can put your suggestion in the comment section below as always tear mark say thank you shukran merci for all your love and support i hope you guys have yourself a wonderful day take care of yourself and your family and inshallah i'll see you guys in the next video take care guys